Well, beloved, beloved, beloved. This is theology in the men's term uh, by your favorite Reverend Henry Sam. This is the channel of theology in layman's term. Tonight, I'm so excited. Um, this hour, I'm very excited about a subject matter I am going to be talking to you about. Suppression, the truth in unrighteousness. Did you ever find yourself in a situation and realize that you have compromised your stance as a Christian, but managed somehow to justify your actions, whatever the case may be. As humans, though, we try hard to do good. It's a human thing. We try. But sometimes our best efforts are not even good enough. I don't know about you. Well, as those whose lives are supposed to be guided by the Judeo-Christian scriptures, it is always good to familiarize ourselves with certain portion of passage or passages that we can identify with. So, this hour, I am going to talk to you about how easy it is on a daily basis to suppress the truth in unrighteousness. Suppress the truth in unrighteousness. I believe that where I'm taking my point from, which is obviously going to be coming from Romans chapter 1, uh, I believe that by that portion of uh, scripture uh, was somehow directed to those who somehow denied the truth in spite of knowing very well the evidence that points to the truth. Uh, but sometimes we as professed Christians find ourselves in the same lane. Again, this is a cautionary um, message, you know, to keep you and I uh, on the right path, okay? I am going to uh, examine four questions, but before I do that, I'm going to read uh, only one a portion or one verse of a uh, passage here, which is coming from Romans chapter 1, verse 18. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who suppress the truth in unrighteousness. Right? The four questions I have mentioned earlier on for examination are as follows. One, what does it mean to suppress the truth? Two, what is ungodliness? Three, what is unrighteousness? And four, what is the evidence of all of the above. What is the, or what does it mean uh, to suppress the truth? Is futility of thought and foolishness of heart. Again, futility of thought and foolishness of heart. All synonyms of futility are applicable. What are they? Pointlessness, senselessness, ineffectiveness, ineffectuality, and uselessness. Romans 1, 
uh, 21 says, because although they knew God, they did not glorify him as God, nor were thankful, but became futile in their thoughts and uh, their foolish hearts were darkened. That is where my point were coming from. Futility of thought and foolishness of heart. Number two, what is ungodliness? Ungodliness is impiety, is unholiness. That is by implication, wickedness, sinfulness, immorality, and transgression. Romans 3.18 says, there is no fear of God before their eyes. Where there is evidence or manifestation of impiety, you can always find wickedness, sinfulness, immorality, and transgression. Number three, what is unrighteousness? 3A, injustice of a judge can be considered unrighteousness. 3B, unrighteousness of heart and life. 3C, did violated law and justice. In other words, what is not conformable with justice? Whatever does not meet God's justice is missing God's goal for us. What is wrong in a man's relationship to a man is also wrong in man's relationship to God. So that is unrighteousness, injustice, hmm? unrighteousness of heart and life. Let's go to number four. What is the evidence of all the above? It's plain and simple. No fear of God. You see, in the gospel, not only is God's salvation revealed, but God's wrath also, and both are the revelation of God's righteousness. Well, I'm going to leave it here. Um, this is just to uh, 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 give you a precautionary uh, uh, tips of how you and I can stay on course so we are not pricked by our conscience daily. Look, we have a, a common unseen enemy out there. He uses everything. He throws everything at us. Hey, by the way, before I leave, uh, look, if you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, if you, you've, you've never heard about him, if you know you've heard about him, but you have not developed uh, uh, that personal relationship with him, I want to invite you, okay, there is a living water, okay, that can quench that test of yours. It is only found in Jesus, not in your own abilities, not in your accumulations, not in your own strength, not in the system of the government or system of this world, but only in him. And so if you confess him, as the Bible says, all sin and fall short of the glory of God. So if you confess him today by acknowledging the fact that he died and arose again on the third day and believe that you are nothing without his cleansing power and invite him into your house and lord i want you to be part of me today i invite you today take hold of me today i exchange my sinfulness for your righteousness today come into my heart you have just done that you have become born again leave a comment in the box there for me let me know what has happened to you like the video share with others 
hit that notification uh, bell and become a subscriber. It does not cost a dime for you to subscribe because I want us to build this together. But so till I see you again, I want to give you a precautionary note. Be vigilant.